It feels like we're buying a new animal right now. Because I'm very excited like we were buying a new animal. She looks a little more grown up, huh? <laughs> oh! <laughs> I can't believe we're gonna go get Xenia. Are you excited about that? Yes. Let's move the pony because she's gonna be happy as well, right? All right, go get him, go get him. Couple things, I know, couple things have to happen to be able to have a milk cow. Either you gotta buy a cow that's being milked, or you have to get a cow that just had a calf, or you have to get a cow that's pregnant and gonna have a calf, or you have to get a cow and get it bred and then wait for it to have a calf. And that's where we're at. We got the cow. Dropped her off to get bread, and uh, now we're gonna go pick her up. Hopefully, she got bread. We have no guarantee that she's conceived, but that's our hope, that's our goal, that's, you know, what we wish, what we're hoping for, and uh, we're gonna go check it out. Um, pick her up, bring her back and see. But, a good friend of hers, shut that for me, son, so these ones don't all sneak out. I know, sheep, I know. A good friend of hers is this one here. Hey buddy, how you doing? I know. So Patience and Xenia are big friends. And uh, I bet you this one's been missing her. xenia has been missing us and her. And we're gonna go see, cause what was one of your, well, we'll talk about that once I'm away from all you guys shouting. Do you guys wanna get turned out on a different pasture today to eat some stuff? I'm gonna let you guys go back here soon too. I just got a fence in a couple trees. We keep these guys here overnight. And uh, then put them out in different pastures during the day. And this isn't even all of them, cause half of them are up in the garden right now. Mowing stuff. But I wanted a generation of stuff here, so the uh, clover gone to seed, the yarrow gone to seed, some of the turnips and different things here have gone to seed. So I wanted to reach its maturity, dump the next generation back on the soil of seed, and then just continue to be lush. And uh, so far, so good here. You ride her over? Can I? And somebody was saying to scoot forward and position yourself more over here as much as you can rather than here, because that'll help. But a lot of helpful tips from people. In other news, we got some friends visiting right now who came down to uh, do a couple things. They wanted to take an off-camera look at our life where we don't edit it. <laughs> and then uh, help with some projects too. So I'm getting nice cedar supply over there too. Elderberries are getting harvested. Mama's working on those right now. I think we might just dehydrate and freeze some because we don't really want to make the syrup now. 
and do all the heat stuff that removes a bunch of good things from it. So we may just dehydrate and also freeze some and then as we need, make syrup fresh. But we're moving patients out to the uh, front pasture right now. And we're putting her out here because when we get back, she's gonna be excited and Xenia is gonna be excited. And if she's out here, we pull in, we can let Xenia out into here. And I don't know, you think they'll just dance and run around and have fun? Yeah. Do you think they'll like nuzzle each other? I don't know. Maybe. And what was one of your concerns about when we go pick up Xenia? Maybe she won't remember us? Maybe she won't remember you? You guys are, you're basically her mom. You're the one who, you know, mama, you guys gave her her bottle for so long. Well, you guys ready? Yeah. All right. Sir. It feels like we're buying a new animal right now. Cause I'm very excited like we were buying a new animal, but then I'm a little bit more excited because I miss Xenia and we haven't seen her since the 8th of last month. So it's sad and happy. Bye bye. Let's go get her. Hopefully she recognizes you, huh? I think she will. What do you guys think? Will the cow be super excited to see these kids again and come running over and just bell her in and jumping around and having fun or will she ignore them? What do you think? Let us know in the comments. Give her a call, kids. I don't know. She ain't coming. Here, stay here now. Let's see. Anyway, I don't know. You think she just likes being a cow with cows now? Maybe. Is that her right there? All right. The one getting Is up. that Xenia? No, not the one getting up, but I oh. think the one standing in the woods. Yeah, I think she's ah! Come here, Xenia! Well, hey, you three little ones, maybe head back. Pinky will come up a little closer yeah, cause where they can see. All the cows are in the shade under the trees there. Oh, is that her right there? No, no, we'll that's see that. where exactly she's at and if she recognizes us and wants to come. We don't know. Oh, I think I see her. She's laying now. Is that a bull? Is that her in the back that just got up? Yeah, yeah. Zini, come here, Zini. Is that her in the back? Xenia? Oh, do you recognize this girl? Oh, she looks so teeny. Come here, little one. Stand up so she can see you. Zini, come! I think when she's done pooping, she'll come. Aww. She looks a little more grown up, huh? Yeah. Oh, Zini. Come here, Zini. She looks fat. See if you can walk her up before you run out of treats. Oh, are you gonna do that to her right away too? I don't know. <laughs> oh! We're back home. Patience has not seen Xenia. Xenia has not seen Patience. We're gonna see what happens when they do. 
What? Like now. Turn her loose. Turn her loose and see what happens. She's just gonna be hungry, I think. Not sure what kind of reunion these two are gonna have. There was quite a yearning for this cow when we first took her away from patience, and she kind of bonded a little more with the sheep, you know, enjoying the company. But we'll see. Sometimes you bring animals together and they're super happy to see each other. We don't know what's gonna happen here. Not the best of friends, but social. They were. I see your grin's pretty big. It doesn't look like a smile that you could fake. You happy? Yeah. So, we're gonna count from the eighth then, is the, probably the plan, okay? What, we got 280 days from there? Something like that, I wrote Something. it down. Okay, you wrote it down. How about you, you excited? Yeah. Well, don't force them. Can't force yeah. diversity or friendships or things like that. Let things occur naturally. I think she's saying more dumb. Yeah. yeah. today this afternoon and we are chopping up some zucchini and we are trying to prepare some batches for baking to put in the freezer for later and then we're going to blanch some and freeze those in the freezer as well for soups or just to have um, cooked on the stove and then what else do you like to do with it for the little guy oh and I'm also making some baby food purees for little chili pepper today I can show them to you too so this is just from one zucchini. I just um, steamed it for about two minutes and then put it in the blender and pureed it. And then I'm just freezing them in the cubes. I didn't have enough for these, but I'm gonna make some more. And then just pop it in the freezer. When they're frozen, I'm gonna pop them in a little Ziploc bag and it's ready to go. And then anytime so. you wanna feed them later, you just pull one out, let it thaw, heat it up and go? Yep, I'll either thaw it just in a little jar or heat it up on the stove. So. so in that other video we showed you how we like to make these and I harvested all that wild garlic which we sold out of wild garlic bulbils. I'm gonna make sure when I fulfill all the orders we have that uh, we don't have any left. If we do have any left I'll list a couple more but we'll see but Mama Pepper had taken it into two jars but it's hard to add the right amount of honey and especially you see how frothy they are at the top so we split the uh, one jar into two and we split the other jar 
into two as we kind of let this process happen for a bit. And once they're done bubbling, and once the solid or honey at the bottom kind of gets worked in, we'll add them back and just have two quart jars to store. And again, this wild honey, especially our local honey, raw honey is really good. And then this wild garlic is really good too for our immune system. And so is elderberry, which we're also working on today. So with the elderberries, I wasn't sure what, we, what way we were gonna preserve them. I thought maybe at first we would make some elderberry syrup, but I didn't wanna add the honey in there and heat it and then lose the good nutrients or the good um, properties of the honey. So I could also add sugar and can it that way, but I think the best way to do it is to um, dry them in the dehydrator and then we're going to just put them in the jar and save them and then whenever we want to have the fresh elderberry syrup for medicine then we can just do it whenever we need it. So we ran out of cheesecloth. I got one little piece left. I'll be able to make one more tray but we got them going here in the dehydrator just on some cheesecloth and I can already see the change from just a little bit ago. There I had a little more trying to go with just a single layer and let them uh, get nice and heated up. There still is some of the stems and stuff in there which can have like a higher cyanide content. So when we get it dehydrated, we'll be able to put them on a big tray and kind of shake it and all the little dried balls will roll down and the stems will stay up. And we'll pick through them before we put them in jars. So again, you know, if we cook up the syrup now and just kind of can it, that's gonna kill a lot of the good nutrients. Um, we thought about freezing it, but we don't really always want to rely on the freezers and tie up that space and Right now we've got two freezers plus the one above our fridge. So remembering where things are and getting them sometimes is not always the easiest. Um, so we thought if we just got some jars available, some dehydrated ones, that'll give us a good opportunity to quickly put them out. And the cool thing too is because we have a couple slightly different varieties of elderberries, they're all elderberries, but they flower and bloom at different times, which means they set fruit at different times, the berries. So we kind of just picked our first bush um, on the side of the uh, pen out there. The second bush is coming in, and then we still have some that are flowering and setting the little green berries right now. So if we mess anything up or if we miss any harvest, we'll have a succession of harvest over a couple of weeks at least, but possibly you know more than a month, that we'll be able to at least capture some of that or potentially all of it, but rather than having just a pile of it, because how many do we get this time? Um, almost five pounds. About five pounds, just kind of off of the one bush mostly. And that wasn't everything on the bush. Some had already disappeared. Some were there and some were still coming into, you know, ripeness. So we don't want to deal with 30 pounds of elderberries at a time. You know, we don't have dehydrator capabilities for that. We don't have other things. So to kind of have it crank out slowly over time helps get a staggered harvest. And I will be trying to make some elderberry jam, I think later as they continue to ripen and try that just to have a variety of, you know, our foods. Another one I might be trying today or soon is going to be some sauerkraut. Last time I made sauerkraut, we still lived in Wisconsin. So I got a bunch of cabbage picked and ready. So we'll see what we do with that. I want a sauerkraut though. We want to get more into fermenting and things like that. And then we got more tomatoes to can up and we're probably gonna start canning some of our potatoes as well. Let me go look at the tomatoes quick. It's kind of nice when you have things pop in. I'll show you the elderberries on the way here quick. And then I might go cut some more cedar here. Um, got a couple of cool projects. If I can actually tackle these things once I get all the resources organized, it's gonna be great. But here, this first elderberry bush, you can see where I snipped a bunch off already. This one mostly lost his berries, but that one's about to be ready. Some of these still have green. Some of them are ripening and getting heavier. Um, across here too, this one's probably ready. These obviously got a ways to go, but you know, this one just has the green berries right now. It's getting its first couple. Over here, you can see where some of these up there, that was just flowers a tiny bit ago. It's barely even starting to go. And as we head down farther too, see we got some mixed colors ones there. Same thing here. And then green ones on the end. So they'll be spaced out. And hey, look, not a wild rabbit. We've kind of been free ranging that one for a while now. 
It's apparently a pretty good escape artist, but it always comes and hangs out by the bins. I hope it's smart enough not to get eaten or something. Hey, buddy. Oh, I forget. I forget what they call this one. But there it is, just enjoying itself. Hiding under my cedars. I'll have the children catch it and put it back later. But it's cool with a lot of the plants, um, when you can get that continuous harvest where it takes a while for them and then slowly over time, you eventually can get the entire harvest in. I'm gonna save some seeds for the marshmallows too. So if anyone's interested in marshmallows, um, that will be coming up soon. But well, we're gonna take a look at these uh, tomatoes, which I think I'm picking tomorrow. We got enough we're working on today, so it'll be easier to fit them into our schedule tomorrow. Uh, but wow, this looks amazing. And a squirrel just ran out of my garden. I don't like them. Look at this wall of tomatoes here, guys. So there's probably about 30 of them, 40 of them, maybe 50 of them here that are ready. Get them going here. And a cool thing too is there's so many different varieties of ways that people put things up. We were talking with a friend the other day and her uh, grandma-in-law. Um, the way that they did it growing up, they would just heat them up in a saucepan when they made them. And then they would just pour them hot into the jars and just let the jars seal on their own. They wouldn't even hot water bath can them. And I think last I checked, that lady who had grown up doing that was 90 something, I think she said. So it's interesting, you know, we're definitely those who hot water bath or pressure can. More there, including some lemon boys. You can see the color on those. Just beautiful, interesting color. So, but Mama Pepper and I both have very different um, methods of preservation. There's a lot to choose from. And um, then if one doesn't have the opportunity, the other one can. And then if the other one does, you wind up with something slightly different. Same type stuff, just different means of storage. So that's definitely on the agenda tomorrow. And the cool thing too is with that many, um, I'll sit over here for a minute, concentrate on talk to you guys. So the cool thing with something like that is that once I get these plants growing, these tomatoes will produce and produce and produce. However many I get and use is how many I get and use. If I have an amazing crop and I don't get to them all, I'll still get a lot. Um, the ones that maybe spoil or rot or the animal the bugs get, I can throw to the chickens. They will gladly eat those for me. They'll enjoy them, ducks too. And uh, it'll all go to use. Even if we're not storing them and putting them up for us, if they can be eaten by the animals, then that's dropping the cost of feed. So either way, it's decreasing our food bill. It's just whether it's our personal grocery bill or whether it's part of the uh, animal bill. I mentioned in a recent video, one of the last times, maybe I was sitting here, um, about that wise man on YouTube, Mr. Chris from Single Dad Homestead. Um, let's talk about making sure to do things right with the animals. We took a trip yesterday and got rid of about 50 of our birds. A lot of them just reproduced after their own kind. A lot of it we let happen, but we want to be making sure to, uh, to get the most out of things. It's cool too, because birds are something you can gift, you can barter, you can sell. There's things you can do. Um, knew some people set up a homestead, so we dropped off about a dozen guineas, some males and some females, and then about a, uh, a dozen chickens, two roosters, the rest being hens, so that they can start printing their own over time too. They're just getting started, guys. Uh, he had a lot of questions about even how to take care of chickens. That's awesome, because he's wise enough to ask questions, and he's wise enough to get started actually doing something, which then allows him the opportunity to get that hands-on experience and start providing things like eggs and meat for his family, and then also, some uh, grounds maintenance. They'll be nibbling back some of the green stuff out there on their property, which is pretty wild. And then also with the tick and bug control. So that's gonna work out great. 
Also dropped off a pile of ducks for another friend of ours. They have a nice pond. We had too many ducks. We're trying to just concentrate on Muscovies. Some friends up the hill from us had like five extra ducks that they didn't want. They said, hey, you want these? And we said, well, sure, we'll take them. You know, we were planning on maybe just butchering up. We chose not to. We chose to send on to another home. So uh, bless some people with those. And then also got to stop out at Zach's from an American homestead to uh, start with their guinea process again. He's got a great video about guineas being expendable. They're the ones who, uh, you're gonna lose some in the war, but they'll help you fight your war against the ticks. And uh, that's a very good video. I like the thumbnail so much for that. And also, we got to shoot a couple good videos. One I've already released. I think it'll pop up over here. Maybe it'll be here. Um, I think it's over here. But the other one is going to be released soon. Um, filmed a couple great videos with him. And in this whole thing, as we talked about in the one about laughing at uh, preppers, having a garden is part of being prepared. Being prepared to feed your family, being prepared to have food, that's important stuff if you plan on eating. We plan on eating, so we're doing these things now and with this amazing harvest too, part of it is the stuff you just saw in the house. We have to find ways to be preserving it, otherwise we can grow an amazing crop. We can have all sorts of food available, but if we don't do anything with it, then we lost it all and it was for nothing. Obviously, between us putting up a bunch, us eating a bunch fresh, having the uh, animals take care of the subpar ones. There's ways to work it out where it's all used and it's all good, but we've got to do something with it. And that's the important part, do something. I was eating some uh, dehydrated tomatoes from last year, uh, just the other night while I was working on a video for you guys. You know, just if you dehydrate the tomatoes to slice them thin and dehydrate them, you can see why they're classified as a fruit. They're so tasty in that presentation and a lot of people will never really get to uh, enjoy them that way. We like them, even the kids. I mean, they're pretty much eating a raw sliced tomato that has no moisture in it, and they love it. So if you haven't tried something like that, I'd recommend it. Experiment, canning, dehydrating, other ways of preservation. Freezing is good. If you got the space, that's something good, but we're trying to get more and more out of that. I'd like to get back to a freezer. We have more kids now. It may not be realistic, but I do appreciate all these other methods that we're able to learn and use for preserving our harvest and having that food later for our family. Um, in other news, I got a new vacuum sealer. <laughs> Darling, are you really doing that with the straw and it just vacuum seals it? <laughs> yes, I am. Did you see that on the old internet or you invented that? Oh, I saw that somewhere. Wow. But we were kind of doing that for when we were doing our chickens. Oh you know, right, we did that too. You put the straw in there in the bags that um, you can freeze the chickens in. And with Miss Monica, right? Yes, with Mrs. Monica. And then, how did we get the air out? Uh, oh, you put the bag, the chicken in the bag, and then you put it in the hot warm water, and then you put the straw on top and you hold the bag and it slowly should kind of suction out the air yeah. anyway, with the heat. Well, that so, was good. I figured any bit helps to get whatever air out, so. Yeah, save that. Uh, space so yeah right on that's right well cow's home cow's happy kids are happy hopefully the cow is bred and we'll see where life goes from there but we got some business to take care of so that'll be a video hey you little guy what do we say thank you for watching Ha <laughs> ah!